Okay, okay, this title sounds really pessimistic, but I bring up some good points in the video, I swear. Hey guys, it's Protendo, and I'm still calming myself down from all the E3 hype that occurred last week. I mean, Metro Dread alone is enough to keep me excited for months, but throw in all the other stuff we got, like a new look at Breath of the Wild 2, and yeah, I don't see myself coming down anytime soon. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised with how much I enjoyed Nintendo's E3 Direct considering how wrong I was while predicting it. My phenomenal Mario Party and Metroid Fall release date prediction aside, there were a lot of games that I expected to see that didn't make an appearance. Splatoon 3, a new Kirby, possibly something Donkey Kong related, and of course, the game that I thought was the easiest lock in terms of predictions, Animal Crossing New Horizons. The funniest thing about New Horizons' lack of appearance to me is that no one, absolutely no one saw it coming. I mean, it made perfect sense. It had been a couple months since the last update, E3 being right at the start of summer made it the perfect event to announce new seasonal content, and it's Animal Crossing New Horizons, the game that rose to be Nintendo's 10th best selling game ever in the span of a year. Why wouldn't they show off this highly profitable, highly popular title at what's essentially Gamer Christmas? Most of the discourse in the Animal Crossing community was about how much stuff the update would feature. Many claimed that it would be a big 2.0 blowout with characters and content galore, while pessimists like myself set our expectations low by anticipating a somewhat underwhelming update. The only thing that was capable of subverting the expectations of both of these groups was nothing. And that's exactly what we got. Nothing. Let me just say right now that the point of this video isn't to throw a fit because we didn't get an update when it wasn't promised, nor is it me saying something crazy like I'm not going to be making any more Animal Crossing content. I mean, joking about becoming an F-Zero channel on April Fool's Day already lost me a handful of subs, I'd have to be insane to drop the game entirely. Instead, this is me kind of fully coming to terms with what New Horizons is, and how it's definitely not the type of game for me. Animal Crossing as a series means more to me than any other gaming franchise ever. While it's not necessarily my overall favorite series in terms of raw enjoyment I get from the games, my emotional attachment to Animal Crossing is stronger than my attachment to any other game, or heck, maybe any other piece of media. New Leaf, Wild World, City Folk, and even Animal Crossing GameCube, which I haven't played nearly as much as the others, all hold a very special place in my heart. These games have gotten me through tough times, and I still turn to them today when I feel like I'm in need of a brighter outlook. New Horizons simply isn't the same. Now, I'm not going to come out and say, New Horizons isn't even an Animal Crossing game, in fear of becoming one of those Breath of the Wild is a good game but a bad Zelda game people, but I can definitely see where Animal Crossing fans are coming from when they say that. Ever since Wild World, Animal Crossing sequels have operated under a strict principle. I like to call this the, it's Animal Crossing, but more, philosophy. Every Animal Crossing game in the history of the series was created with the idea that it would take the previous game's content and expand upon it. Sure, there were some cuts here and there, but if you look at Population Growing, then Wild World, then City Folk, and finally New Leaf, you can fully track the series' growth in terms of its wealth of content. New Horizons, on the other hand, takes a different approach to sequel development, adopting a philosophy that I like to call, oh, we're wacky now. Gone is the choice to build off of previous games' groundwork. Instead, half of New Leaf's content was thrown out and was semi-replaced with new stuff. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this philosophy. There are a lot of games that I love that inherit a similar development ideology, Breath of the Wild being a key example along with other titles like Super Paper Mario. But what I've come to realize is that New Horizons threw out almost all of what I loved about Animal Crossing, and it's extremely doubtful that updates can fix that. The villagers in the game are a complete afterthought with the sole purpose of being another one of your island's many decorations. The game's progression system is near non-existent, with a single shop upgrade to unlock in comparison to New Leaf's wide variety of upgrades and new buildings. The small town atmosphere has been torn from the core of the game and replaced with a build-your-own-paradise design philosophy. Most of the lovable characters that created the series atmosphere are either completely watered down or erased from existence. I can't see Rossetti! New Horizons is a mere shell of what I cared about in the Animal Crossing series. But here's the thing. Despite all that, I can't say it's objectively a terrible game. Because it all comes down to what you value in the series. While everything I just listed was intentionally made to sound negative, that's only because it's coming from my perspective, and I'm a big atmosphere progression guy. 
There are thousands of people who can look at all the things I just said, take a gander at what New Horizons replaced it with, and see nothing but an improvement. And that's completely valid. But so too are my thoughts and feelings on the game that I know tons of other fans echo. Animal Crossing means something to all of us, and we all have differing priorities in terms of what we think makes an Animal Crossing game. And honestly, I've come to a realization over these past few months. You guys better brace yourselves for this one, cause it's a doozy. I'm even gonna cut the music to make it sound more dramatic. I... don't like Animal Crossing New Horizons. I think it's an extremely mediocre experience. I got a lot of backlash for giving it a 6 out of 10 in my review back in March, but honestly if I did that review now, it'd probably be a 5. And that's completely fine, because I don't expect anything from this game anymore. Knowing that thousands of people around the world love it means that I'll never doubt its value, even if it doesn't hold much value to me. Does this mean that I won't continue to hope for updates that improve the game? No. Does it mean that I'll stop making videos about New Horizons? Absolutely not, I literally have an extremely large video project about the game in the works right now. If you haven't noticed, my content doesn't exactly revolve around me adoring the game. I'd still love to be proven wrong and have this game reach its full potential. Who knows, maybe when everything's said and done, it'll miraculously become my favorite Animal Crossing title. But until then, eh, I won't be complaining too much. This is a different Animal Crossing for a very different type of player. I just hope that the next entry in the series does a better job of accommodating to all playstyles, like all of its predecessors did, instead of a specific one that kind of ignores a lot of the series' strengths and appeal, and also cuts out a very large part of the fanbase. In the meantime, I know New Leaf's always got my back. I mean, you can actually see Rossetti in this one, what more could you want? Anyways guys, that's about it for this video. As always, I'd love to hear what you think. How do you feel about Animal Crossing New Horizons? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all later. Protendo, out. Please don't kill me for saying I don't like Animal Crossing New Horizons.